Hello everybody and welcome to this video on Snowflake. So I wanted to make an update on Snowflake today. They reported uh, their earnings um, and, and and you know it, it's it's okay I guess uh, uh, it, it, it is my take on this. Uh, they did show 70% revenue growth for a full year uh, compared to the prior year uh, and quarter over quarter they, they, show, they showed uh, 54% but there's been some, you know, some declines, like net revenue retention rate uh, has been dropping and it's now on back to the level of the IPO. Um, and what really, um, you know, annoyed me is that guidance, right? So uh, I'm getting used to send back guidance and like all of the companies have sent back guidance. But the, the company that I was really hoping would not give us send back guidance was Snowflake because Snowflake is, is a very expensive company. And uh, Snowflake is now giving us 40% guidance for fiscal year. Um, 2024, which is which is bad. It's just bad for this company at this valuation. Now, okay, you know, Palantir gave us essentially nothing for 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 2023. So at least they have 40 percent guidance, which is still above my 30 percent threshold. But given how expensive the stock is, you know, I would I would have expected much more. So I, I can't say that I'm very happy. I'm not going to sell the stock, but I'm not going to add to the stock either. And for a stock like Snowflake, I have, to, I have to go back to the initial idea of investing even in it. What I liked about it was that the CEO is Frank Slootman, and the CEO is very, very confident um, and has been very confident and guiding again and again and telling us again and again that in March 2029, when their fiscal 2029 is over in March 2029, they will have 10 billion of product revenue throughout uh, that year 2028, which they would report in March 2029. And so I'm just I'm just using that, that data point as kind of a kind of a guide. And you know, my hope is that the company does much better than that. But if they keep guiding like this, and I haven't listened to the call yet, so I can't really say whether they're sandbagging or not. But if they if they keep keep guiding down like this, it's it's just it's just a disappointment appointment in my view um so to better assess this company and the, really the only way to assess it i i believe is to use the, the the 2029 guide and so let me just do do just that to to um kind of kind of display what i think here and and here are my thoughts so they said they would do 10 billion dollars in revenue by March 2029. Now, why, why would I even uh, uh, believe that? Well, I believe that because uh, Frank Slootman has a long history, um, say, with, with a lot of companies. He's written many business books. He's a praised leader. He's, he's shown repeated success m multiple times. Um, and he um, did really well with ServiceNow. And he actually uh, propelled uh, ServiceNow, a company co focused on cloud digital workflows, uh, into to a, a, a mature company that is doing very well. And so if you look at what Frank Slootman did at ServiceNow and you apply it to Snowflake, which, which you know, again, Snowflake has a very fundamentally good business model, you could expect, um, you know, the same valuation. So let's assume the price to sales that ServiceNow has today at this depressed valuation is the price to sales that the market is going to give in six years to Snowflake in March 2029. And so if you 10 billion in revenue times 12 and a half multiple that would be a snowflake worth 125 billion in 2029 against 21 billion or a 2.5x my money in six years or a 16.5 percent yearly return so essentially the nasdaq so not too exciting if you know the type of return that i tend to aim in this channel now if we were to assume that we're going to be out of this macro short-term madness in 2029 which I believe we will, and we assume more normalized valuation and say we have a 20% valuation for Snowflake, that would be much closer to my long-term goal of 30%, which, because this would, take, this would take Snowflake at a 25% return, so nothing to sneeze at. But I really believe for this investment to be a, cor a cornerstone of, of my, my portfolio, which it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a tier two position for me, Snow, uh, um, uh, Snowflake out of my tier one, tier, tier two, tier three. It's kind of um, a more, more of a, a SaaS position. I'm or SaaS positions, you know, um, to be a tier one position, you, you would really need to see bigger, bigger growth. And, and I am not, I am not seeing that. And, and therefore, you know, I, I, I believe, I believe it is a, it is a disappointment. I will go on and listen to the call. Um, 
And one last thing I'll say is I've done a few deep dives uh, on Snowflake before on the channel, so I will link them in, link them in the description of the video. Um, because, you know, there are also fundamental reasons as to why this company would be valued as high as it is. They really, really underlie this big data revolution. They, they really have a solid business model with solid moats, very important backers like Warren Buffett. So there's a reason why it's so expensive. But it's, it's, it's just disappointing to see them guide 40%. And, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just not going to pretend that it's good. It's not too good. Thankfully, the long-term guidance was maintained and it still yields a decent to good return, right? And I'm looking for great returns. So this was not investment advice. This is just entertainment. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe and have a wonderful day.